you are a free agent this fall, right? Because it was in the fall. And you are, as Steve called John Tavares a couple of summers ago, the bell of the ball. Who are you? This upcoming summer? No, no. This this past fall. Who was the Taylor bell? Hall. Taylor Hall. Okay. Who was the other bell of the ball? Oh. Alex Petrangelo? Yeah. Who I would argue is the bigger bell of the ball. To be oh, no. You. You're right. You're I right. I got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so Alex Petrangelo looks at his life and goes, okay, I w- he said he wanted to sound in St. Louis. They went out and they got Tory Krug, so he wasn't going to stay there. Um, and there was a few other options, I think, that might have been available. The market was depressed a little bit. Teams with less money to spend. But he ends up at the team we all thought he was going to end up with. Mm-hmm. Vegas, right? If you're Alex Petrangelo... It was, it was a lot of... It was a lot of chest puffing. He was always going yeah. there. Yeah, he was always going there. And Chris came on and told us at the time why you would want to go there. It's the place to be. But Brian Burke brought up a, 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 I think it's probably one of the best Brian Burke points. And we should have asked him when we had him. There were so many things I wanted to ask him. Uh, One of the best Brian Burke statements we've ever, ever heard in broadcasting is the two-year rule in Vegas. Everybody's there for two years and then then they, they kick you out. And when you see... Max Pacioretty's name come up in trade rumors. If you're Alex Petrangelo, are you not just a little bit upset? This is a guy that scored 30 goals, does it all the time. Yes, you could argue he might be a depreciating asset, but he just scored 30 goals. I would say that I would be upset about that. I would say the reason, part of the reason I signed with Vegas is that Max Pacioretty is playing there and I can pass to him if I'm Alex Petrangelo. What do you make of the rumors today that Flurry obviously um, uh, Patch Reddy and others are potentially on the trade market. Well, it's it's all very confusing because are the Vegas Golden Knights good? Are they one of the best teams in the league? It yes. Has to be. I mean, w- Western Conference Final, Stanley Cup Final, Western Conference Final. Was Nate Schmidt part of that? Yes. Uh, what if you put Alex Petrangelo in and take Schmidt out? Are they better? Probably. You're, you're you're better, but I don't I don't know how much. Like, I don't honestly, know how much, but you're probably better, but I don't know how better. much. Now, what if you add Alex Petrangelo, but you take out Nate Schmidt and you take out Max Pacioretty? You're worse. Like, that's difficult. Now, you are going to get something for Max Pacioretty. Maybe. But what is that? Um, are you going to have to sweeten it? Like, it's weird. You ever look at Vegas in the moves they make? And it's difficult because... It's hard to look at the results of their first three seasons and think they've made too many mistakes. I mean, they made uh, Stanley Cup final, one of the most bizarre finishes to a first round ever, and the third round. Yeah, this this past year, and we all thought they were going to the Cup final. We did. Uh, so kudos to Dallas for beating them. Um, but I look at some of the trades they did, and Max Pacioretty is part of a unbelievable digging up scenario with them. They traded a first, second, and third for Thomas Thomas Tatar. Tatar. Yeah. Did not play him. It's not even that he was bad. They didn't play him. They did not play him. And then they, what was the package? The package was Thomas Tatar. Nick Suzuki. A second rounder, I think. And Nick Suzuki. For Max Patch ready, and now you're going to trade him for what? It better not be a, a sweetener to go with him. And I know COVID, and there's obviously different circumstances than there were uh, even at the even a year ago, a calendar year ago. But that that is a that is a pretty terrible digging up scenario. That's horrible. Um, and you know Vegas, they have drafted decently, and they they got some. They got some guys coming who can help replace Max Pacioretty's uh, offensive output. I would assume Alex Petrangelo is part of replacing his offensive output. But yeah, like you said, for crying out loud, 32 goals, 66 points. Uh, And, you know, he wasn't as good in the playoffs, but he was still half a point a game. What else do you want from this guy? That's what he does. That's you got Max Pacioretty for that. And then what do you replace him with? I'm trying to think of the the players they have in their system. Here, maybe I can look at well, them. Well, they've dealt a lot of them, right? 
they well, that's part of I mean, boy, you, you know who would look great for them is uh <laughs> Nick Suzuki. But <laughs> wouldn't he? But I mean, at least you had I, I get it. They they were under the impression their time to win is now. If I was them, I would definitely think that too. So, um, so here's what Frank Saravalli's talk says. He said that there's three years and seven million a year coming on. I would assume you can find sorry, a taker. Sorry to interrupt, just real quick. I would assume Cody Glass is going to get a much bigger role, but beyond that, I'm not totally sure. So if you could, if you can find a taker for Pacioretty, apparently what McCrimmon and McPhee want to do is go after Mike Hoffman uh, or Eric Holla. Mike Hoffman makes a little bit of sense. Yes, well, but what are you going to get? It's not replacing you're, the production. Well, it may predict, it may do the goals, but I think Patch Reddy brings a lot more than goals, right? Yeah. Like he's a responsible player. Um, and obviously you have Mark Stone as well, who is a responsible player. But I think you've got to have I, – I mean, I understand the, the draw, right? You can get – you could get may, potentially – Let's say Hoffman's good for 28 and Patch Reddy's good for 33. So you could you take the you take that and then you probably could get Hoffman for three and a half at this point. Really, let's be honest. Probably um, cheaper. Uh, maybe yeah, yeah. he's been sitting out the whole time. So if you take even if you get him for two something, that's five extra million dollars, and then you're spreading that around. So you're like, okay, I replace almost all of the goal production plus I get five million dollars. That if, seems like a smart you financial a play. How are you now, gonna take him? Now, yes, you could get some of Pacioretty's production from him, but uh, I still remember this on uh, free agency day coverage on Sportsnet. I always take a look at who's at the kids' table because sometimes it's me. And in the ice surfing studio, it was Carolyn Cameron and Justin Bourne. And Justin Bourne did a buyer beware segment, and Mike Hoffman was on it. Now, why did he say that? Yeah, because his fancies are garbage. Um, he, he's and Vegas not- pays attention to that, by the way. Of course, most teams do these days. He's he's a defensive liability. And I think in most years you go, yeah, the guy's a defensive liability, but scores 30 goals. We'll figure it out. But now that nobody has any money, um, it's a different conversation. And he probably thought he was going to cash in. And right. I would have I would have too if yeah. I were him. And he's gotten boned. Yeah. Basically. So this uh, Mike Hoffman should look at this as a very potentially unique opportunity um, because Vegas could trade patches and then he could swoop in there in probably a reduced role, but probably get lots of power play time mm-hmm. and join a team that has a really legitimate shot at winning the cup. If you're a team like Columbus, that's got a ton of cap space, you could, you could grind Vegas on this one. Like let's say they, let's say they take 2 million bucks off max patch already. 66 points for 5 million bucks a year on, on a team that can't score goals with a veteran guy. Um, that's a great leader, been a captain in the month, like in Montreal, which is not an easy market to be a captain in. Um, boy, I think Tortorella would be, and, and Yarmo Kekalainen for that matter would just be, it's, you know, salivating at something like that. That's a perfect guy for them. That's perfect for their system. Um, you know, he's, I think, if I'm looking at it, if I were to cap this, if I think there's any team that would be interested in it, I think it's Columbus because I think they look at what they did to the Leafs and think if we had a little bit of goal scoring, a little bit of goal scoring, the smothering hockey that we play with a guy like Seth Jones coming into his prime um, and, you know, two good goalies and Zach Rowinski, uh on the way up. Although apparently, according to Aaron Port's line, there's potential he gets traded. Um, you know, those are, there are a lots, there's a lot of good coming out of Columbus and they kind of got through the, the two years where they weren't going to have any draft picks, which is last year in this, in this draft. So there's lots, I, I feel like Columbus to me is a sleeper to pick up somebody here. So um, if you're Columbus and you're looking for offensive production, yeah. why not just sign Mike Hoffman, the 30 and 30 guy, and then just accept the whatever defensive liabilities we think he has and not take on the three years of max. I have an answer for you. Mm-hmm. Your coach is John Tortorella, and he won't play him. If, Why wouldn't if he play him? Tortorella does not play guys that are defensive liabilities. He if, will not play him. Will if not. he wants and him we, to play defense, then he'll expand <laughs> his defensive role, and he'll make him good at defense. Sports right? hates that shit. He didn't do it with Duclair. Mm. With who? With Duclair? Anthony yeah, Duclair. Wouldn't play him. Wouldn't play him. Not just wouldn't play him, said he can't play. Yeah. And then he Torts, hung a hat trick on him. God, Torts that had to feel so good. Like Hoffman and Torts would be oil and water. 
his style of play versus and towards his yelling and and very defensively strict manner it's it's there's there's a reason that hasn't happened already and jesse on paper it makes a ton of sense but, also but gave John Tortorella up, will never, ever, ever be a good coach for Mike Hoffman. Just wouldn't work. They also gave up, you know, a decent amount for Ryan Dezingle, who yeah, is sort of a weaker version of that. Like he's he can score. He's not a good defensive player. Um, I'm sure I'm like I know Torts is known for being unreasonable. I don't know if he's that unreasonable. I think he could figure out how to make it work. Um, but well, yeah, th- this is a player who you got to protect a bit. Well, and, but you, you, you know who I think million. you know who I think could isolate him and protect him quite a bit is Vegas. Hoffman? Oh yeah. Oh 100%. That's why I think he's a good good fit there is they've got great defense and great and and forwards that are great um responsible guys. So Hoffman doesn't need to play that role. Right? What if- in, in Ottawa he didn't play that role, right? They had a great when they were good, uh it was like Carlson and Hoffman doing crazy shit like the the football pass. Um, but they had a bunch of guys around them that were going to take care of it if those guys got caught. If Vegas can find a way to get rid of Pacioretty's contract without bringing too much back, it's amazing what COVID has done to the cap situation because you could potentially take that money that you saved on Pacioretty and get Hoffman and Duclair. Because that's just what (laughs) – both those guys should be getting the biggest contract of their lives, and it's just not there. And it's amazing they're both still available. And Halla, I, 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 you mentioned right off the top, I forgot he was even an option. It's unbelievable. 